Hey y'all, let's take a look at two different types of problems today. You ready to go? All right, let's do it. First type, of course, pause and copy if you need to. These equations with decimal numbers, really uh, the easiest thing to do on these. And uh, again, in algebra two, use a calculator if you need to, to do complicated long uh, arithmetic stuff. Don't use a calculator to type in eight times seven, uh, which is 87, uh, or two plus nine, 29. I mean, use it for stuff like this. But the point is, if you want to solve an equation like this by moving this over to the right, you know, and subtracting and then dividing the entire thing by 0 .003, that's fine. It'd be nice if you knew how to do it without using a calculator at all. Um, and the way to do this is to actually just turn these all into integers. Turn every coefficient of x into an integer and all, the, all these different terms into integers. And if you look on this uh, equation, you, you realize the, the worst offender that you're gonna have to mess with is this one here. You're gonna have to move this decimal over three times to turn it into an integer uh, coefficient. Well, that turns it into three X, right? But if you do that to one, you have to do it to every single term in the equation. So if you move this over three times, you get one and then two zeros. So that gives you plus 400, and that gives you one, two, three zeros Yoink, that's going to be 2050. You know what to do now. I won't bother to solve this, but you know you subtract the 400 and divide by 3 and so on. But that's the way to do it is just go ahead and move everything over an exact amount of, same amount of times for all terms. Find the one you have to move the most. Do that one and do everything that's just like it. Okay, so let's do one with an actual word problem. The students found that 0 0.015 of the math teachers could dunk basketballs. If there were 300 who could dunk, how many total math teachers were there? And as always, if you're a visual learner, it's nice to draw a picture, right? In other words, here's your picture, okay? There's a .015 could dunk basketballs. So I know this is more than .015, but there's .015 that could dunk basketballs, right, out of the whole thing. 300 could dunk. So that means this number, whatever that is, is 300. How many total were there? In other words, we're looking for this big honking number. We don't know what it is. But, and again, don't forget how to do these percent problems. There are two ways you can do it. You can either turn this, you know, uh, turn this little paragraph into an algebra equation, or you can just honk out, you know, fraction equals fraction and fill in the four blanks. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this into <coughs> an equation. So. In other words, uh, 300 is 0 0.015 of something. Does that make sense? You look at this and you go, okay, well, 300, that is 0 0.015 of some number. So let's go ahead and write it. 300 is 0 0.015 of, I'll just call it what? Because I don't know. All right, can you take that sentence and turn it into equation and into an equation and the answer is yes you can okay unless you can't and if you can't it's okay we're gonna mess with it all right so 300 is equals 0 0.015 0 0.015 of multiply what call it x and i hate going right to left like this so i'm just going to flip this so 0 0.015 x equals 300 now the previous page we just saw that when we piddle around with decimals and all that kind of stuff and equations, we just make them into you know, integers. So move this thing over three times and turn it into a 15x, which means you move this thing over three times and that turns into 300,000. Okay, this is, you could do this in your head if you want to, although you use a calculator if you want. You should recognize that 15 goes into 30 twice. So you can put a two there. And then one, two, three, four zeros is all you need. And there you go. The answer is 20,000. Is that a reasonable answer? Let's see. A little teeny part of the math teachers could dunk basketball. That little teeny part was 300. So the 300 has to be a small part of some big honking number. And there's the honking number. Or as mathematicians call it, HN. Okay. The other way to do this, if you like it, is to go like this, uh, okay? Don't even think about it. Fraction equals fraction, you got four blanks to fill. Well, 0.015, 300, blah, 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 okay? We'll skip that for right now. 
but uh, that is another method you, you, you know you should at least attempt to use if you can't figure out the other one but after a few weeks of doing this you'll be fine okay well look at this there's another one it's a very practical one too so pause and copy if you want to studies showed that 0.932 of the politicians promises were impossible Boy, how does, does like Saxon Matt keep up with the times all the time? Anyway, you should recognize that's like 93.2%, right? 0.932 are, were impossible. If you made 2,000 promises, how many were not impossible? Uh-oh, okay, let's, pick, let's kind of circle that. I always do that. Okay, so in other words, here's your drawing if you're a visual learner. All right, so 0.932, impossible. He made 2,000 promises total. So there's, so how many were not impossible? This is what we're looking for down there. All right, well, we're trying to figure out then what is 0.932 of 2,000. In other words, this, and then once we find that number, we'll subtract that from 2,000. That makes sense? Because we're gonna find out this part, not that part. All right, well, the question we ask then is, what is 0.932 of 2,000, and I'll stop right there. Does that make sense? I mean, you're, you're, we're trying to figure out what this number is right here. Once we find that, we'll subtract it from 2,000 and find out how many were not impossible, right? But that's the question we're asking right here. You'll get quicker at these and they'll come to you and you'll be able to do them. But let's turn this into an equation. It's pretty sim simple here, right? What x is equals 0.932 of 2,000, and there we go. Okay, and if you want to do a calculator, you can. Of course, you can just go 932, uh, excuse me, multiply by 2, which is 1864. All right? Since we have that as the one where impossible, well, all we do is subtract 1864 from 2000, which gives us 136. Okay, there we go. That's it. The other part, uh, we'll, we'll just hold off and do it that way for right now. Okay? This is the other type of problem we're going to do. It's called consecutive integer. Don't forget what an integer is, right? Negative, all the way infinity. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, all, all you know, to infinity. All right. So pause and copy if you need to. And the question is: Find four consecutive integers. Now, do you know what that means? Four consecutive integers would be like eight, nine, ten, eleven. Negative fifty, negative forty-nine, negative forty-eight, negative forty-seven. 8, 9, 10, 11. I think I just said that. Um, anyway, that's what four consecutive integers would be. So we're going to make up an equation based on this right here. All right? So find four consecutive integers such that five times the sum of the first... Blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever. All right. So let's figure out first. We need four consecutive integers. Well, let's just make up something for the first one. We don't know what it is. We'll just call it x. In other words, this could, this could be 12. It could be negative 20. It could be 8, whatever it is. So what's the next consecutive integer? Let's say it's, we start with 8. The next consecutive integer is 9, obviously, right? So how would we relate 9 to 8? We'd say that would be x plus 1, right? That's the next one. The sec, uh, third one would be x, x plus 2. And the fourth one, since we're looking for 4, is x plus 3. Okay. Let's figure it out now. Okay, so five times the sum of the first and the fourth. Okay, so five times the sum of the first and the fourth. Okay, so the sum of the first and the fourth would be x plus x plus three. In other words, two x plus three. All right, this is one greater than eight times the third. Well, let's just figure out eight times the third. Eight times the third would be one, two, three. That'd be eight times that. Let's figure out the old seesaw problem. In other words, this, here's the seesaw as it is right now. This one is plus one. We're, we're kind of, it's kind of heavier, right? All right, so what do we need to do to the right side over here to make this seesaw equal like that? We're gonna have to add one. So we're gonna have to go, we can go one plus, you could have done all this jazz plus one, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's our basic setup. So let's go ahead and distribute. 10x plus 15 equals 1 plus 8x plus 16. I'm clonking that 8x over to the left. That gives me 2x. Um, let's see. That's 1 plus 16 is 17. 
I'm mashing the 15 over. 17 minus 15 is 2. Well, there we go. X is going to be equal to 1. But don't forget that they're asking you for four consecutive ones. So your answer just isn't one, isn't just one, it's one, two, three, and four. Let's just check this to make sure uh, we're right. One check, by the way, that we're right is that those are integers, right? I mean, you, I've had uh, kids before go, hey, I got the answer. Uh, my, my answer is uh, X equals eight thirds. And no, you already know it's not a right answer because that ain't no integer. Okay, or else I should say that ain't, ain't isn't not an int. You know what? Forget it. It's not an integer. Okay. Those are integers. Let's check them. Five times the sum of the first and the fourth. Well, what is five times the sum of the first and the fourth? One plus four is five. Five times that's 25. Is this one greater than eight times the third? Well, there's the third. Uh, eight times that is 24. Is that one greater than that? Yep, it sure is. That proves that we're right. All right. Let's try one more. Pause and copy if you need to. All right, three consecutive even integers such that blah, 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 whatever. Go to that in a second. Okay, now this is different. Look at your three, four consecutive ones right here. Those are just consecutive ones. Now you tell me, how many numbers separate even numbers? Like let's say you had 40, 42. What's the next even number? 44, right? So two, two separates that. Let's say you had negative 50. Well, the next even integer would be negative 48. Well, two separate them again, right? You're going to be given problems that say consecutive even integers, consecutive odd integers. Here's another question for you. How many numbers separate odd integers from each other? Let's say you had five. What's the next odd integer? Seven, right? If you had 37, what's the next odd integer? 39, right? So it doesn't matter if they tell you even or odd. There's always two between them. So that's, that's your clue. Anything even or odd consecutive, there's always two between them. So let's figure them out. Three consecutive even integers. Well, there's the first one. We don't know what it is. So what's the second one going to be? X plus 2, right? The third one, three consecutive, will be X plus 4, right? Okay, and there you go. Five times the sum of the first and the third. Okay, well, five times the sum of the first, that's an X, and the third, that's another X plus 4, so 2X plus 4. This is 16 greater than 9 times the second. Well, 9 times the second is 9 times X plus 2. But this is 16 greater. This part is heavier, you know, if you want to look at a, a, like a seesaw. So we're going to have to add 16 to this side to make it even. And of course, don't forget, you can also, oh, if you go, oh, this is 16 heavy, you can put minus 16 on the left side. That's fine as well. It doesn't matter. Minus 16 on this side, if you were to flip it and go over here, it'd turn into positive 16. So it's the same thing. All right, let's distribute. 10x plus 20 equals 9x. And let's just go ahead and go, that's going to be, what, 18 plus 16. All right, so 9x goes over here and turns into 1x. I'm going to go ahead and do this coming in one swoop here. 18 plus 16 is 34. And I'm going to, the 20 over, 34 minus 20 is 14. Now let's do a check. Our, first off, that is an even integer, so that's good news. All right, so let's find three consecutive ones. So the first one's 14. What's the second one? 16. And the third one? is 3,084. No, I'm just kidding. It's 18. All right. And there we go. There are three consecutive integers we got. Okay. All right. Try A in the practice problems. Go ahead and pause it and give it a whirl. Come back when you're done. Okay. If you're, again, again if you want to look at this as a picture, 0.017 on the stars were red dwarfs. Okay. So here they are. 0.017 were red dwarfs. If 29,000 stars were examined, that's all of it, right? So how many are red dwarfs? We don't know. That's a small number, right, compared to 29,000, okay? So you tell me what English, in, 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 an, in an English sentence, unless you know Chinese or something, how do you say what we're asking? What question are we asking here? I'll start you off. Okay, what? What comes next? What is... 0.017 of 29,000. That's the question we're asking. Okay. 
So you can just make this into an equation. X equals 0 0.017 thousand. And there we go. And I'll show you a trick if you want to do this in your head, or at least a little, make it a lot easier for yourself. Slop that thing over three times and make it into a 17. Since you did that, pop that over three times and make it a 29. All right? So the answer we have here is, if you know, of course, your 29s tables, you remember that 29 times 17 is... Four hundred ninety-three, and there we go. There's your answer. Okay, pause it and try B. All right, well, let's start off three consecutive integers, even integers. That means there's going to be an x. That'll be an x plus two, and that'll be an x plus four. Three times the sum of the first and the third. Okay, so three times something, the sum of the first and the third. Well, there's the first. There's the third. It's two x plus four. It's 84 less than 12 times a second. Okay, let's hang on to that for a second. 12 times a second would be this. You want to visualize the seesaw. And that thing, there's your seesaw. Okay, and this thing is 84 too heavy, which means on the left side, to make things even, since this is 84 less than that, we're going to have to clop over here another 84 pounds. All right, there we go. And that's how we set it up. So let's take a look. 6x plus, uh, that's a 12. 3 times 4 is 12, right? Let's go ahead and put 12 plus 84 is 96. All right? Then over here we have 12x plus 24. Okay, well, let's move the 12x over. That gives us negative 6x. And let's move the 96 over. So 24 minus 96 is the same thing as 96 minus 24, which is 72 but they're the opposite of that, okay? So negative six goes into negative 72 uh, 12 times. Good check right there. Three would be 12, then 14, then 16. There we go, okay. And that's all she wrote. All right, we will see you guys next time. Have a great day, thank you.